Hello, hello. My name is Nicole and I am doing this talking head video as like a pseudo live test. I've been seeing a lot of things kind of gearing towards going live and I keep saying there's no way I can go live unless I know what it would look like. So I'm actually gonna just have a conversation and shoot the shit and kind of see how it goes. So I'm sitting right in front of this bright freaking light that I never sit in front of because I lost sunlight doing another video. So I hope that I'm not squinting or there's nothing funny going on. My name is Nicole. I am a dual licensed real estate broker. I was a property manager. Um, I just relocated to Nevada from the East Coast and right now I'm a small business owner for the first time ever in my life. I've been a real estate broker forever, an independent contractor, but this is the first time I've actually like really tried to start a business. And so the business that I, the business that I started is called DIY Home Consultants and essentially what I do is I assist homeowners in DIYing their homes on a budget. So you will see me update a couple of projects in this uh, apartment with renter friendly products. And so that's what, one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about it. Having the background that I have in real estate, I'm able to effectively, um, I don't want to say it like this, but really get what I want when it comes to um, real estate and leases. You know, I was a property manager for 10 years. I can't even tell you how many leases I've drafted. I'm a renter now, but I'm also a landlord. I've been a homeowner since I was 24 years old. Real estate is my judge. I started my corporate career in real estate. So half my life literally has been in real estate. So I'm very, very well versed in it. And I'm not naive to the fact that that experience has helped me in a lot of situations since moving to Nevada. And I want to talk about a couple of those with you. So the first one is when I got permission to make changes in this apartment. Of course, you know, most leases will say, you know, you can't make any changes unless you have the express written consent of the landlord. And so I reached out to the property management office and I asked if I could um, do a couple of renter friendly, you know, peel and stick updates, you know, contact paper, border tape, wallpaper, just basic stuff. And the response I got was a generic, like legal protect yourself. Well, you know, we don't, unfortunately we can't allow any changes. And so I said, well, what's a change? Because I've already made changes. I mean, people make changes all the time. We hang curtains. And in this particular apartment, my front door is actually destroyed underneath. I don't know what the previous owner did or what's going on, but these doors are like metal and my door is bowed. It's like, it's bowed up, right? So like things can crawl under it or drafts come in, right? So what I did the first thing, one of the very first things I did in this apartment was I bought a peel and stick uh, door sweeper and I just put it right along the edge, of, right along the bottom of the door because I didn't want the draft and frankly, I don't want bugs and nasty stuff crawling underneath my door. And I didn't even give it a second thought. I'm like, okay, I'm saving them money. That's thousands of dollars that they don't have to spend on a door. And quite frankly, I don't like people in my space. So if there's something wrong with this place that I can fix, I'm going to fix it. I'm not going to call maintenance and have people checking all through my house to do stuff that I can do. Now, most tenants aren't like that. But like I said, I've been a homeowner almost half my life. So I'm used to just fixing things that like I don't like. So I made that point to them. I'm like, you know, if you're telling me that I can't have a peel and stick door sweeper, which essentially you're telling me by saying I can't have a peel and stick countertop or a peel and stick wall or a peel and stick anything, a command strip to hang a picture. Essentially, that's what you're saying when you say I can't make a change. I'm like, if I'm going to have to remove that door sweeper in order to comply with the email you just sent me, well, then I'm going to need to have my door replaced, which I don't want to do, but I'm just making the point. Like, what is a change? Can you please clarify? Now, most people would have just been like, oh, the person said no, and they would have let it go and been upset. But I'm like, no, I'm going to need some clarification on what that means. So the response I got back was, um, you know, I'm sorry, we're just relaying the message from like, you know, headquarters or whatever she said. And she said, but, um, you know, we just can't allow any alterations, right? So I said, okay, in my mind, I'm like, okay, that's a different word that has an entirely different meaning. So I actually looked up the word and this is going to go to my second point about knowing your rights and knowing how to push back. So I, sorry, it's just, it's just, okay knowing your rights and knowing how to push back. So the first thing I did when I got that email was I looked up the word alteration or to alter. And the definition stated to change the condition of something oftentimes permanently. And I said, well, there we go. Like, I don't need any further cl clarification. I'm not changing the permanent condition of anything. I'm basically covering it up. So once I got that okay, I kept it moving. I didn't go back to them and say, well, the word alter means da 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 Because as far as I was concerned, 
I had a follow-up email, which is another point that I'm going to touch upon is making sure you get stuff in writing. I had an actual email that told me I cannot make alterations to this apartment after receiving the email and pushing back on the fact that I can't make changes and made really great points about, well, what does change mean? That's a vague, generic, legal babble, protect yourself type of response. And so as I, because I pushed back, I was actually able to get the response that I wanted and needed in order to move forward with these projects. Because quite frankly, when I launched this channel or I guess kind of relaunched it, I had a whole bunch of ideas of things that I wanted to do in this apartment. So if she wasn't gonna let me update it, well then I was screwed. I was losing months of content because there's a lot of things in this place that I wanna change and that I'm gonna change. So to get to my point, um, when I said, uh, make sure you get things in writing, make sure you get things in writing because if something were to hit the fan or something were to blow up at the end of my lease i can say well no i emailed i complied with my lease by emailing to get permission and the response i got at first was i can't make changes but then when i asked for clarification i was told i can't do alterations well the definition of alteration is i will insert here and um i did not do that everything that i'm doing is removable everything that i'm doing is reversible i'm not changing the permanent condition of something or i'm not permanently changing the condition of something now frankly painting a wall isn't really permanently changing the condition of it because as long as you can paint over it you can paint over it but technically it's more of an alteration than wallpaper would be because wallpaper is really no different wallpaper to a wall is no different than curtains are to a window you're just covering it up. So that's how I looked at it. Border tape as a frame on my mirror, it's a sticker, right? I'm not changing anything permanently. I'm not gluing anything. I'm not cutting anything. I'm just covering it up. So you have to make sure that if you're going to play semantics, you need to make sure you have something in writing to refer to, and you need to make sure that you can come from a legal position. And I'm not a lawyer at all. Like I said, I'm a dual licensed real estate broker, so I'm very well versed in real estate law, but I am not giving you legal advice. I am not telling you to breach your lease. I am not telling you to argue with your landlord. I'm just saying, if you get a response from your landlord that you don't agree with or that you don't think complies with your lease, make sure you get the communication in writing. And as long as you can prove the intent or your understanding or interpretation of a conversation or a word that was used or an explanation that was used, for the most part, you should be safe if ish hits the fan. So again, get it in writing, make sure that you are able to prove your interpretation of something, what your intention was and why you feel that you are not in breach, okay? Read your lease not just before you sign it, but throughout your tenancy. I've had two situations where my lease actually protected me. One of them got me out of a lease that I was not happy in. I had signed a 15 month lease and I was able to get out of that lease in three months without penalty. I'm actually gonna do a separate video about that called how to get out of a lease. I'm also gonna do a separate video about how not to get out of a lease, about how a tenant of mine did some shady stuff tried to sue me in like a very tenant friendly state and ultimately lost and her case got dismissed and she ended up losing like $3,000 because she just thought she was going to be able to just walk away from a lease because she essentially changed her mind and was going to just cite all of this nonsense even though she knew I was a realtor and a property manager and like I was very clear and thorough here we go going back to getting things in writing I was very clear and thorough about why she was going to lose her security deposit and how I did not want her to lose her security deposit I cited the law I was very thorough in my communication with her so by the time we ended up in court I didn't even have to defend myself I just sent in my the email chain and she ended up looking like a moron because she in the email said a lot of things that were completely contradictory to her original claim so I'm gonna do a whole video about that as well but my point is make sure you are reading your lease and so in this particular case i'm going to give you an example of what this apartment complex recently did so i would say about three weeks ago we got a little notice on our door saying that oh we're so excited to introduce this new gate entry program where you're going to be able to enter the complex with your phone now i guess i'm technically a millennial but i'm like on the cusp of i think gen x but i guess i'm technically a millennial i was born in the early 80s and um, 
people would expect that I would say, oh yeah, yippee skippy, I get to use my phone to enter my complex. But I had so many problems with that. Like I can't even begin to tell you. And it's actually kind of irrelevant to this story, but long story short, literally three weeks ago, they sent, they give us a notice saying, oh, we're gonna make these changes. And then probably two weeks later, we got an email saying, oh yay, you can download the app here. And as of literally, this was a Tuesday evening, Tuesday at like 4.45 p.m., we got an email telling us that our existing key fobs were no longer going to work on Thursday. Okay. Like, I don't know what kind of, for, mm, I don't have a problem with the community manager here. I really don't. I actually kind of really like her. I'm sure we've probably had a few words and maybe like it took a little while for her to get to know my personality. Cause I can have a very strong personality. Like I said, I'm not afraid to push back and I'm not afraid to let people know that I know my rights. Now I might not do that with the popo because they don't like when you know your rights, but I digress. But when it comes to real estate and tenancy and my money and my convenience, I'm going to cite my rights. And frankly, it's in the 20 page freaking lease that you made me sign. So I'm going to use that to protect protect myself. So I basically just sent a very nice email on Tuesday evening just expressing my concerns, all the ways that having to use my phone to enter a complex is inconvenient. And the response back I got was like, oh, well, you know, as with anything, change can be uncomfortable. And it was very dismissive. And so I sent a more firm email after I reviewed my lease. And I'm a year and a half into living here. So, you know, it's not like I haven't read the lease. I read it when I first moved in. I read it when I renewed my lease. And then I read it again, just looking for that specific passage about keys and entry to the complex. And so after I got that little like, you know, brush off, oh, it could be uncomfortable. I was like, okay, well, first of all, if you deactivate my key fob, that will be a breach of lease. Being a real estate professional, I could cite illegal lockout or I could cite constructive eviction because you're putting me in a situation where I'm no longer comfortable. I do. I would never live somewhere or sign a lease or do anything, reside at any place that requires me to use my cell phone to gain entry ever. So at least through the duration of my lease, I should not have to do that. You can't just decide you're implementing something new and I have to comply with it unless it's specified in the lease that they can make certain changes to certain things. Hi, honey bear. You want to come sit up here with me? Come here. This is Teddy. This is my second video today, so he's getting sick of me. Don't lick my face, baby. I have makeup on. I love you. My sweet boy. See, this is why I can't do lives either, but I'm going to actually wrap this up because it's going to get a little... It's. This is why I can't do lives. Um. So anyway, so I basically was able to... Oh, oh no, you stay right here, baby. I'm going to be quick. I'm going to put you down in a minute, but I want the people to see you. Yeah. Mama wants the people to see you. Okay, so I was able to basically cite my lease and review my lease and what the verbiage in the lease stated was that any new locks need to be made by management that was the verbiage it didn't say need to be provided by it said made so the way i interpreted that was two different ways right a um you can provide me with a mobile device and the app but then my key fob still needs to also work as far as i'm concerned because i just <laughs> i'm just not there's just a lot of inconveniences in my mind for having to use a cell phone to gain entry into a place. I walk my dog twice a day. I pick up groceries. I do target pickups. I mean, this, I get gas. I go to UPS and drop off packages or whatever. I go to the mailbox. Like I'm in and out of this place all the time. I don't even go to stores and use my phone to purchase something. I am not putting my phone up to any scanner. I don't do that whole dab your phone thing. Oh, send this to me, dab, dab. The whole drop key thing. Oh, I don't do any of that stuff, okay? That's why I touched upon the fact that yes, I'm a millennial, but I don't do that stuff. Long story short, I was able to go back to them and say, um, you know, that would be a breach of lease. Do not deactivate my fob because that would be a breach for these two reasons. And I didn't actually cite the two reasons. I just said it would be a breach. That would be like your landlord saying, oh, we changed the locks and now you have to go to Ace Hardware and go pick it up. Like you have to go get it because essentially I was supposed to turn in my key and then cr create my own key by downloading the app. So that's the first thing. No landlord on any planet ever or on any, no landlord on any planet can tell a tenant, oh, we changed the locks and you have to go to Ace and pick it up. I mean, they would have to ask you if you would be okay with it but legally they cannot tell you we changed the locks and now you have to go figure it out right but more specific to this situation essentially the way my lease read was that they have to make the lock which legally would mean they would have to provide me with the mobile device with the app on it so that was interesting when i actually went back and read my lease but long story short after i cited the fact that changing the fob would be a breach because my lease entitles me to use a key fob and i intend to maintain such access throughout the duration of my lease 
And the next response I got was, um, I can appreciate your concerns and um, we are looking into getting fobs that work with this new gate system and until then, please use your old fob. And I was like, thank you, I will. Thank you, whatever. But let's be real. They didn't decide to get fobs to, that work with the gate because I pushed back. There is no way that this community of thousands of people all were like, yay! And I mean, older than me, younger than me, people have kids that go to school. Like, you should be able to just give your kid, if you are a stay at home mom or you are sick one day or you're taking the day off or whatever the case may be and your kid goes to school, you should be able to give your kid that key fob to go to school so that when they are walking home from school, they can get back into the complex. Now, some people I'm sure jumped right on that bandwagon because it's cool and hip and whatever. But 100%, they did not decide to come up with fobs to uh, work with the gates because I pushed back. 100% other people pushed back. And at the end of the day, their way of saving face and not looking like they made a mistake by thinking they were going to make this ridiculousness mandatory was to say, until further notice, please use your fob. No, not until further notice, until the end of my lease or you actually execute what you said you're going to execute. But that would be foolish because why would you get new fobs? that work with the gate system when your whole point was to get rid of the, the fobs and use cell phones, right? But that's another story. So I wanted to tell you guys that. Look at my notes. Sometimes your landlord might make changes because it's more convenient for them, but it actually goes against what is in your lease. So I put a note that I appreciate that this community manager actually took the lease into consideration and didn't deactivate my fob. Whereas the place that I lived before this, where I was able to get out of that lease, that property manager just thought her ego and what she said trumped everything and it blew up in her face because I was able to get out of my lease. And they messed up because they gave me the whole weekend to look up Nevada law. So that just blew up in her face. But the second thing was, don't be afraid to push back and ask for clarification in writing. And I said, why? Oral agreements do not override written agreements. If you are ever having an issue or a dispute pertaining to a contract or the law or your rights, and the person wants to have a conversation with you over the phone, you have two choices. You can tell them, I prefer to have this conversation in writing, or you can send an email stating, okay, pursuant to our phone conversation or pursuant to the phone conversation that we're going to have, ba 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 And you need to lay out everything that was discussed or everything that you plan to discuss before the conversation. You need to get confirmation from that person that they acknowledge that this is what the conversation is gonna be about and or after the conversation, you need to get confirmation from that person that that conversation was had. Because if you don't, that person can deny ever having a conversation with you altogether, let alone the subject matter or what was discussed. So you have to make sure you get things in writing. You can never say, well, they told me, who cares? Legally, that new agreement does not trump the written one. Now, like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I'm sure there are sometimes in cases where lawyers can like finagle this and that and the other thing. Law is not a perfect system. And I don't just mean the gross injustices of it. I mean, two different judges can hear the exact same case and draw a completely different judgment or conclusion on what the ruling of that case should be. It's a matter of interpretation of the law, which goes back to my point about your interpretation of a contract and what your intention was in taking whatever action you took that one might say was against the contract, but you can explain why it wasn't. So law is just one of those imperfect things it's all about interpretation it is not a perfect science so i'm going to wrap this up because like i said this was really just a test to see if i'm ready to go live if i wanted to just turn on my phone and just have a conversation with like nothing really planned or scripted and there's no list or no inserts or anything like that like what would it look like and how would it be received and so that was really the purpose of this yes it was a subject i wanted to discuss but when i first came up with the idea it was not to do it live this is a completely on the whim pseudo live video i hope when i watch it back i'm like okay i'll post it as is just comment let me know what you think and thank you for tuning in until next time thank you take care